All right, folks. If you can see Fusion 360 aluminum rings, raise your hands, please. All right. Leave your hands up. Don't take them down. So if you can see it, great. Um, tonight we're going to do a little more fusion, but we're going to focus first and foremost in getting the aluminum rings. We met this in lab. If you missed um, last Thursday, we have lab. Pardon me, this Thursday as well because of the snow we didn't have it the other day. So I would like to... Uh, Go ahead, go through the lab, understand what's going on when you do CAD, what's the processing, and so you can cut out a ring, okay? And for those who didn't get a shot to ring or was going to do a ring, here you go. Now, first thing you need to do is if you go into Young Engineer State Metal School, you'll see for tonight's class, it says something, band tool rings. This is a Fusion 3D file. So go ahead, I'm going to put everybody's hands down, I'll give you a few minutes while we wait here. Go ahead, go to the Google Classroom for Young Engineers of Today and download Bantam Tool Rings. And then I'll show you how to load it up in the Fusion. Tell, raise your hand once you've downloaded it onto your computer. Okay, everybody, I've been, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes because some people come rolling a little bit late, but I want to make sure the people that get here on time aren't punished. All right, just get, please, once you get it, go to Google, our Google Classroom, and download the Bantam Tool Rings, please. So people, I just got here, go ahead and download the Bantam Tool Rings file. I've saved it. Go ahead and just download it on your computer. Raise your hand once you've done that. Alright, uh, still, come on. Aiden, if you would, download it. We have several people here. If you download it, would be great. Aiden, Calder, Liam, Logan, Max, let's get them loaded. Let's go to Google Classroom and download this file. Please, guys, if you got here late, go to Google Classroom here and then download this file. Just click on it, it'll download. All right, I'm going to go on so we get other folks here can get in. All right, so what's going to happen is you're going to go to Fusion. Let me go on my Fusion. Go ahead, start up. 
I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Uh, let me go new. Raise your hand when you have Fusion up. I'll show you how to load this file in there. Once you have Fusion up, let me know and then we'll unload the file on there. Okay, raise your hand once you got up there. Okay, great. Now I'm putting everybody's hands on. All you're going to do is go up here where it says, I'm going to close this. So you see a little bit better. Well, a little bit more here. Go where it says File, New Design from File, and select Vanim Tool Ring. A lot of other things, but that's what I'm selecting. It's going to start off in CAM. You're going to see it right up here is in CAM. We are going to uh, have it here a little bit more. Once you have this ring, show me. Raise your hand once you have the rings. All right. So we're doing our names. Still got several people. I'm gonna give them a few more minutes. Might be slowed down. We'll bring everybody's patience. Um, Carlos, I've got the webinars, buddy. I can't go over last Wednesday for you right now, but I will, uh, it's recorded and it's updated so you can watch it on there. I'll do a little bit of review as we go through there, but I can't really go through all of Wednesday right now. So just watch this. You don't need to know last Wednesday. This is new to this, Calder, so you're all right there. So please, if you don't have access to a machine or you're not going to be able to load, raise your hand then too so we're not waiting for you. 
Like Aiden, why I logged your file up there, buddy? All right, let's watch any questions on here. We'll get started. Hopefully you'll get on this next part. All right, my sister has the PC now. Greg, it says mine can't be downloaded. I'm not sure why not. Well, Aiden, you should have already been logged in. We've done this before, man. Go to Google Classroom. Log in. We did this We did this last time, guys. All right. Do you know what Google Classroom is, Aiden? Good. Call room. Glad you All right. Then go to Google Classroom. Do you not have the code again? I sent it out to you last time. Did you do that? Do you have the code? Do you find our classroom? Do you need the code again, Aiden? Give me a second, Aiden. Please, everybody, when we ask you to get to do these, please do them at the time or tell us at the time. All right. Let's figure it out. We'll get it there. Um... And switch over to um, Young Engineers today. Here's the code, Aiden. Please use it. Please be on this. If you're not already, folks, we're going to be using this throughout the whole year. Let me know. Did you see the code, Aiden? I just sent it to you. I copied it and sent it to everybody. All right, use that code to sign in. That's your code when you go to join the class. Calder, go ahead and download the presentation slides and slowly your work your way through it, buddy.
think we're going to do, uh, let me do a real quick show of hands here too for me. Put everybody's hands on. How many of you guys have done SketchUp? Raise your hand if you've done SketchUp. Yeah, people from our classes in the past have. A bunch of you have it. It still might be good to show you that option too. Aiden, are you in the cl Google Classroom yet? Where you're li literally the class is waiting on you, my friend. All right, did you download the file? Uh, it shouldn't take too long. It's a pretty small file. Let me know once you've downloaded it. All right, great. Excellent, Aiden. All right, so let's go to Fusion. All right, so again, all you're going to do is go to this new envelope, File, New Design from File, and then select Bantam Tools, Ring. Something like this should show up. It'll say it's going to cam it. If you have this ring on your screen, raise your hand. I'll put everybody's hands on. Try it again. If you've got the ring on your screen, raise your hand. All right. Now, key on fusion. You've got right over here drilling, multi axis, turning profile, cutting. So that'd be 2D like a laser cutter. You can even see they show a little laser. We're going to go from cam. All right, to model. Everybody go from cam to model. I'm going to go a little, I'm going to take my time here so we get this. We get this done and maybe the base of the lamp will be fine for today. All right, well, Anthony, just we're recording this now. You can always watch it when we're recording, buddy. I'm glad you got a new computer. Remember, if you have a lab Thursday, it's this Thursday. All right, raise your hand if you've got it so it says model right here so we can go on to the next part of this. I only got one person who says, seriously? Come on, you all are, you all are bright kids. All right, great. So, once it says model, there's the origin. Let's make sure I got the right one here. Oh, I jumped on the wrong. There it is now. Let's try this. Then once you get models, you're going to see something that says sketches. All I want you to do, turn on. 
Now all I want you to do is double click on it. This is going to give the sketch the underlying drawing that is the ring. And this is what we all did. We drew that. And if you weren't there, fine. This is great for an opportunity to see this. Um, and we've got a chance this Thursday for the Thursday Light kids to go ahead and do this. So there's the ring. We got the ring was drawn using on the Phantom tools. All right. Then double click here. This can be inside diameter of the ring. That's the thickness of your finger. I'm going to make this one, let's just say my finger is 0 0.70. I'm just making that number up, guys. All right. Now I hit 70. The whole thing expands out. Can everybody do that, please? Raise your hand once you've done it. Just say yours to 0.70 is fine. It doesn't matter what it is. We're just doing an experiment. Obviously, raise your hand once you've done it. I'll check questions. Yes. All right, can you go over that again? What part do you want to go over again? How to double click that? Remember, what all I did is I double clicked on sketch, then I clicked on this number to change it. Raise your hand when you have it. All right, great. Okay. And obviously, you can click on this number out here. Let's just change it a little bit. But I'm going to make this point. I'm going to make this 7. And the thickness is a little bit wider, too. All right. Now, here's the important thing. If you don't do this, you'll forget, and it won't work, and it'll drive you crazy. I've done this enough times. Make sure you hit Stop Sketch. So once you change your two things, make sure you hit Stop Sketch. And we'll come back to this. Now, the thing about CAD software is you really, a lot of times, you have to really think through everything because the computer does exactly what you say. It doesn't do what you want. It does what you say. And computers are pretty stupid, actually. So we have to always be careful what we get going. Okay, you got it. All right. Now, put everybody's hands down. All right, I'm going to go back to Cam. Notice, before when we first came on, there was no red signs there. That's because you've drawn, you've changed the drawing. And it says, hey, before we can go ahead and cut this, you've changed the drawing. So these, these won't matter. So look, these tell you, look at that. It shows you literally how your blade, it's going to get um, cut out. Because remember, this doesn't grind things. It cuts it. So here's the different tool paths of what it's doing. So it's saying, hey, this is the old tool path, but you just made changes. That doesn't mean it's necessarily the right tool path. Right? So what we do is we right click on setup and we say, all right, generate a new tool path. This will be based on the sketch and everything we just did. Notice this no more red marks. If you can't, change it or if the toolpath stays red you're still in SketchUp on the other side. You gotta make sure to go back to modeling and turn off sketch.
Got it. Do I click on SketchUp, then generate the toolpath? No. All right, let's look over here again. No works. Here's what you do. You're in modeling. When you get done modeling, you select Sketch, Aid, and Watch. Say you're in Sketch. And you go down here, and I double-click on this. I change this value by clicking on it once, which everybody can do if they want to. So I'm going to make it 69. All right, bud. Say 69. Then you'll see it right here. I got to hit Stop Sketch. Then go up here where it was before it was mod it's modeled and put it back to cam. When I do it, these will be wrong now because you've changed the drawing. So what I do now is I right click on it and I generate a new path new tool path. I can even do this. Right click on it and I can simulate. It. All right, and if you hit this, here's what it'll do. It'll start showing you what the toolpath's going to do. Everybody go ahead and write and simulate it so you can see exactly what the toolpath is. It's leveling the thing off on the top. All right, I mean setup. I'm not sure what I mean by setup. No, you don't. You fix the errors by going right over here. Hey, make sure you're in CAM. Right click on setup. Oh, I'm going to be in simulation, so it doesn't want to give it to me. All right, let me just stop this. That is going really fast. Oh, uh, then all right, there we go. All right, if I right click, how do I get this out of simulation? I hit escape, go to right click setup, and to generate is just generate toolpath. Just click that. Say yes. It's just warning me saying, hey, you didn't have to regenerate it. The toolpaths were fine, but I wanted to do it. Everybody hit simulation. Everybody hit pause when they do that. Come out of it then. All right, let's let's go and figure out what everybody's saying. All right, raise your hand once you've done that. We got to simulate it, run the toolpath just like we did. All right, come on, folks. Everybody should have the file. If you got Fusion 360, let's go ahead. One last time, let me show people the den. Go right-click Setup. Generate a toolpath. Mine said, hey, I already generated it. By running it again, I'm going to check this face. I hit Simulate. Little hourglass thing going there. And that's what's it's giving you an idea 
you know, the tool that we cut with is pretty small. You can tell from that. Make sure you can do that, folks. Because it is a good habit to see, okay, what do you think it's going to do? And if you're running that machine, you should have an idea. It escaped, you'll be out of it. I don't back out of it. All right. All right. Any questions on this? Now get ready for this next process. So when you do cam, when you do cam, where it's the little other mills we have, or the shop bot, which you're going to get to run that big CNC machine, you have to make tool paths. You've got to take it from V-Carve, is what we use with the shop bot, or with Fusion 360. you got to take what you've drawn, create a tool path. That's what tells the computer to do it. All right, let me see here. Got some questions. How do I start? We do that again in the simulation. All right, one more time. Go to right click on setup, then hit simulate. And just hit run. The little VR video, run it. All right, enough with the simulation. I think you've all seen that enough. Did you guys get it over there? We love ourselves a good simulation as much as the next guy, but let's get through that. All right. Now, the next thing, once we have that, right-click on Setup again, and we're going to do Post Process. A little menu should come up. Looks like this. Generic post using the other mill, other plan. That's what we're talking about. Program. Say OK. Then that's the code you actually use that goes to the other mill that we would name it. So in my case, your case would be, you know, your name and ring. So Tom Ring. And may I put the date if I made more than one of them. I'd save it and it's now going to be under downloads. You are also, it's going to ask you to install brackets. It's just going to automatically put it in there. What that's doing you is giving you the code. This is all the code that I think just generated. That was a nice, simple 2,543 lines of code. Pretty amazing, huh? But that's what it does.
Let me when you know when you have it, because that's when you've got this done. All right. So next time, when you're at the lab, you want to manufacture some things, that's what we're going to go ahead and cut out. All right, everybody. Good job. Well, I'm not sure why your menu looks different. Just make sure you're in CAM and model. Make sure you download it where we all downloaded it from. All right. Make sure you went from model to CAM. Again, I've, I've included under the handouts the presentation slides for this, so you can go through those. Any other questions? When you click post-processing, not sure why. Sorry. Show me when we're in our lab next time. You can look at it there. All right. Any questions more about this? How's my pacing real quick? Go ahead and vote on the pacing, folks. All right. Let me close the poll. We had nine, one, two, three. Closing the poll. Let me share results. 60% say it's good. 30% say, hey, you're too fast. It's too slow. I will make sure and slow it down a little bit more. I would rather have some people complain it's too slow than people thinking it's too fast. I will try to slow it down for you. All right. Now, and again, folks, in case we're not going to just do three Fusion 360 the whole semester. So don't worry, but we're trying to show you some different things with it and maybe, you know, give you enough to get rolling down the future. All right. I'm going to um, just show you this video. Sculpting. Stand by the folks there. It's not as, you know, it's a seven, I guess seven minute video. We'll probably interrupt it part of it, but I do want you to see this. Let's go through and see if this helps. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to create a freeform model of the stand, create a hole in the stand, and then modify the physical material and appearance. We're going to get the freeform model of the stand. We completed the Don't shape worry. and the arm using I'll the top down modeling uh, technique. I'm not going to create a Folks, I think down the road I will share you pieces of this thing and you can put them together down the road. That'll be the goal if you're unable to finish it. But I do want you to see all the different steps to this. Maybe you don't get it all now, but down the road gives you an idea. Design for the stand. I'm going to create a form which takes me into the sculpt environment. Watch this you know, and then we'll do it together we in a minute. The sculpt there instead of the model workspace we were in before. We create a number of free forms. I'm going to go with box, start the origin, and key in the first value of 25, press the tab key, and the second value is 30. Click to place that, and I'm going to place the height, and that's going to be 25 millimeters. I'll leave all the other values the same. Now what I've created is a T-spline freeform model, and it consists of faces, edges, and points. Something that's very useful when you start your designs is to add symmetry. So I've created symmetry. You can see that green line through the middle of the model. When I select one side, because of the symmetry, the other side is also selected. If I get to modify, I'm going to select Edit Form. 
drag that manipulator and you can see it's actually stretching the model out. That's not what I want, so I'm going to set that back to zero, hold down the Alt key. Now when I drag, because of the symmetry and the Alt key, I'm adding on those legs of my tripod, which is what I want the stand to look like. I moved it out 125 millimeters and then 75 millimeters. And I'm dragging it down, and this is a negative value, so it's negative 50 millimeters. Click OK. So that's a good start for this tripod that we're creating. A review of the design to, at this point shows that there's probably a little too much material just in that center section. So I'm going to double click on that edge, which also selects the bottom edge. Double click on here. So now that complete edge is selected. I can now right click to get to edit form. And before I start to drag that back to remove material, I'm actually going to add a little bit. I'm going to stretch that out. So stretch that a little bit, and I'm making these changes quite small at this point. Drag that back. So I'm moving those faces. Unlike the Alt key, I'm not adding material. I'm just stretching these or editing the form. So again, just very small increments. And that Folks, all we're doing is watching right now. I've got my slides. We'll go over step by step. But let's just see where we're going with this whole thing. And then we'll come back. So I'm hoping this helps. Just see an overview. Better. Click on OK. So you can continually check your design, but be very careful at this stage. You're pretty close to a good design, so you don't want to make major changes. The other side of the tripod is going to be the single leg. Select the top and the bottom, holding down the control key for multiple selections. I'm not using the Alt key this time. I'm just dragging that out, and it's negative 50. I need to drag that down. So take the manipulator. It shows a negative value, and again, negative 50. So we can see the three legs of the tripod, but this last one, the third one that I created, is the same thickness all the way down. I want to scale that so that it's smaller at the bottom. So I use these little manipulators. If you pick the wrong one, just undo. There we go. I think that's much better. So it starts out at the thickness at the top and then narrows down as it comes to the bottom. Click on OK. Click in the background of the screen to remove my selection. A quick review of design shows that the portions are good, so we can move to the next stage. Let's stop there. Something we'll have to check is that... Okay. So all I really wanted you to see was we're taking this little square, and this is sculpting more. We're taking this little square, and we're pulling it apart. Now, I'm not going to get really wound up that it looks identical to the one I draw in a few minutes here. All right? But... We want to go ahead and get started on this, all right? So don't get overly concerned if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. It looks something, but, you know, not exact. So go back into Fusion. It's already open on your screen. I'm going to do a new one. All right? Now, the very first step, I'll wait for everybody to get up here. I'll show you which one you're going to use. And in fact, I'll do this in PowerPoint, probably the best thing to do. So a lot of slides. All right. First things first, you're going to hit new design. I'm going to bring this up. If you've got a question, ask me now because I'm about to hide the screen. It's hard for me to see questions here. Next minute. Okay, then, so, the Infusion 360, you're going to create new design. Let me go ahead and 
I'll be a little bit easier to see. You're going to go new design. You're going to collect create form. That's this shape right here. Observe your menu just changed. Your toolbar just changed when you did that. So then we're going to create just a box. It's called a T spline because you move in all these different directions. It's more like sculpting. Select the plane, the bottom one there, looking like in your default position. Blue and red right there. And then go ahead and enter. Then you're going to make one length on uh, 2.5 centimeters or 25 millimeters with 30 millimeters or 3.0 centimeters or 25 centimeters for the top. And just hit OK once you've done that. And for me, raise your hand once you got it to that point. Okay, raise your hand. I only got a couple people said they got to that point. Where do I press edit the box? You don't. You just click it and type the numbers in off, to, off of it. Just redo the box. Just to undo, draw the box in. You'll see the values are right there. The menu box will come up. You can put it there. You don't have to edit it. And we're going to pull it and push it a lot anyway, so it's not a big deal. All right. Now, the next thing you do, when you draw that box, those choices that come up, it's 2.5 centimeters or 25 millimeters if you didn't set it to mil you know, centimeters, millimeters. All right, there it is. Now, click on symmetry and select one face, then shift another face, and they'll both appear on this. Watch. If you click on one, it'll automatically appear on the other. And really almost even one is all you need because it'll give you that green line that's symmetry. So just click on this, the other one, just click on that. So you got two, but they've got to be opposite of each other, and you're going to get that symmetry.
Then you're going to edit, click on Edit Form. All right, this is where you start grabbing pieces. You're going to hit pick one and hit the Shift key. So you pick up two, and then the other side will change. And then you can pull it out with this arrow. Um, use the Alt key as you're pulling it out, and it'll make it even bigger. So play with it. Doesn't matter tonight. Just play with it as you pull it out. Let me show you. So I go up here. I'm going to create a form. I have to you enter, so use the finish form button to return to modeling. So finish form when I'm all done. I'm going to go to create a box. I put it down here. I put one corner here. Then over on the side, it's a millimeter, so I'm going to say 25, 30 by 25. Oh, you won't see my, let me see if I can pull a box over here so you can see. So you go 25, let's tab over. I'm hoping that's the right one, 25. Oh, wrong one, 35 by 25. All right. Now, I'm not sure why my bow. Oh, come on. There it is there. It's kind of hiding down where I want it. 25 by 35 by 25. And then if I should, I believe if I go over here to answer one question, someone said about adding it. Let's go here. Uh, display mode, convert physical. No, I. This is what drives me a little bit crazy with Fusion 360. All right. See, that's the only thing kind of goofy on this is you can't. All right, here we go. Subdivide and appearance text. Nope. Still don't want to do what I want. Go on to the next part just because that's weird to me. I'm gonna grab this end, I'm gonna grab this end, then select symmetry. I should set, I should internal. There's a green line, two lines are selected. I say okay. Now, when I click this one, the other side automatically collects, hold the shift key, the bottom one does. And then we're gonna start. So we're all set there. We're gonna go to modify, edit form. Now I'm going to grab this. I can pull the whole thing to pull it up, but I'm going to pull it this way. Now, that's not what I really want to do. Let's do Alt or Option on a Mac, Alt for all you Windows guys. It's actually going to make it longer. And then you can even pull it from the side. Sorry about this. That's why I get terribly, I think I'll broken up about the dimensions because honestly, you're going to do things like this to it. So I grabbed it there. See if you can at least get it to there for tonight. We'll go over it again. And I'll find out about getting the size of the box right off the bat. So that's what you're pulling for. Let me get everyone over. Okay. You know, say now I agree with you. The edit tool is a little bit iffy because really you're end up just stretching and pulling. It doesn't add quite the other one. Now once you're done, you hit finish form. Well, I'm in the wrong thing, but if I go into fusion, my slides. Once you have it, hit finish form. I do.
Interesting. If I even go back the other way, yeah, it doesn't it really doesn't allow itself to do much of that. Okay, sorry for that, guys. Uh, what is all on a Mac? Um, it's the option key. Okay, it's 757. We'll come back to this. We'll try to get that drawn out this weekend. We'll also, again, um, have lab Thursday. And I will share with you parts that are finished. So that way, don't worry if you don't quite have it. I just really, in the middle school age, I want you to see kind of the things CAM and CAD and Fusion 360 are capable of doing. All right? So don't get... Don't beat yourself up too much if you don't quite get everything. Heck, I, I still fight with it sometimes in the way it does planes. Still is not always obvious. And it's not always consistent. Today, uh, Fusion 360 was down for an hour. All right. Well, hey, you all have a great night. I'm going to get ready to do the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.